Okay, in this video, we're going to cover um, 9.2. Sorry, I'm trying to adjust my monitor. I was squeaking over there. Um, but in this section, we're going to be two variables of linear systems. So they're going to look a lot like the, set, the ones that we saw in um, something like that, right? Um, where all of the variables do not have any exponents. Um, and you have two equations with two variables, okay? So all of the equations in 9.2 will be of that type, okay? So you won't have any of the x squareds or anything like that in this section. And uh, we have already talked about the um, substitution method, but now we're gonna talk about the new method called the method of elimination. I've also heard it called the addition method. So it's the same method, it just has two different names, okay? So um, we'll talk about that method, we'll do an example, continue with the method, then we'll talk about the graphing again, just to kind of correlate some stuff. And then we'll talk about some other examples and definitely hit those practice problems. Okay, so for the method of elimination, okay? Um, the idea is, is to obtain for one of the variables, so you either choose X or you choose Y, but for one of the variables, you want them to have the same coefficients that only differ in sign, okay? So for instance, if you look at these two equations, notice that this is 3X and then this is negative 3X, okay? So they have the same coefficient, but this one's positive and this one's negative, okay? When that happens, you can add the two equations together. Okay, and normally they add them in a stack like this. Okay, and that's why it could also be considered the addition method because you do have to add the two equations together. Okay, um, but if you add them, notice that a positive 3x and a negative 3x would cancel, and a positive 5y might and a negative 2y would combine to give me a positive 3y, and a positive 7 plus a negative 1 would result in a 6. Um, and then from there, you could divide by three, right? And get the value y equal to two. Um, so note that by adding the two equations with those specific kind of coefficients, um, the x terms do eliminate and you obtain an equation that just has one variable in it, which happens to be y in this case, okay? And if you solve that equation for y like I did, you end up with y equal to two. And that can be substituted back into one of the equations to solve for x. So for instance, I could take that equation one and then plug in the two there for y. And I should be able to solve for x because x is the only variable in this problem now. So if I do this, then I would have to minus 10, then I would get negative three, I would divide by three and I'd get negative one. And so then the solution point would be negative one for X and then that two for Y, okay? Um, however, the problems, the equations are not always given to us like this, where this is a three and this is a three, one's a positive and one's a negative. So sometimes you have to make it that way, okay? Um, and so then, that's gonna add like a layer to the process, okay? So notice that step one says you must obtain coefficients, okay? That for X or for Y, whichever letter you're trying to get rid of, um, that differ only in sign. By multiplying all of the terms of one equation or both equations by a suitably chosen constant, okay? So you choose a specific constant so that they can match, okay? And it says add the equations to eliminate one of the variables and then solve the equation you obtained. And then once you have that value of one of the letters, you can plug it into one of the original equations to get the other letter, okay? So let's go ahead and look at this problem. So for this problem, we have, um, we have this. Now, if you notice, you have to choose. You have to choose whether to eliminate the X's or whether to eliminate the y's. And this problem, I am going to do it again, eliminating the other variable that they chose, that they didn't choose, okay? So according to what they've done, what, what they have chosen 
is to eliminate Y, I think. Yes, they chose to eliminate Y. And Y, W-H-Y, right? Why did they choose to eliminate the variable Y? Because if you notice, they already have the different signs. So I don't have to change signs of anything, but this one does not have a four in front. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna take this whole equation and multiply it by a negative four. No, negative four, just a four. You don't want it to go negative. You want it to stay a positive four. So just multiply the whole equation by four. So that's what they do. They took this equation and the top equation stayed exactly the same. And the bottom equation, if I multiply everybody by four, this becomes 20X, this becomes four Y, and then this becomes negative four. And then if I add the two equations together, 2x plus 20x is 22x, negative 4y plus 4y will cancel, and then negative seven plus negative four is negative 11. And then you could divide both sides by 22, and it looks like they reduced that fraction to negative one half, okay? Now, I could have also chosen to, instead of eliminate y, I could have chosen to eliminate X, but the only way to do that would have been to do five times equation one and two times equation two. What would that do? It would create this, make this a 10X and it would make this bottom one a 10X. But one of those would need to be negative. So I would have to choose whether to multiply the top one by a negative or to multiply the bottom one by a negative. But you don't wanna multiply both of them by a negative because then they'll both be negative 10 X and it still won't cancel, okay? So I'm just gonna choose the top. So if I multiply this by negative five, I would get negative 10 X. If I were to multiply this by negative five, I would get positive 20 Y. And if I were to multiply this by negative five, I would get positive 35. Then if I were to multiply this equation two by two, I would get positive 10x, positive 2y, and um, 2 times a negative 1 is negative 2. So the negative 10x plus 10x cancels. 20y plus 2y is 22y. And then 35 minus 2 is 33. If I divide by 22 and I reduce, I get 3 over 2. And so then that would be the y that corresponds. Okay. Now, if you did it, if someone eliminated the y's, they would have obtained this, and then they would have had to go back to one of the original equations, and it doesn't matter which one, they chose to put it back into equation two, but you would plug that number in for x. So you would end up with negative one minus four y equal negative seven. Then you would have to add one to both sides. So you'd get negative four y equal to negative six. Then you would divide by negative four. You would get y equals, and this reduced is three halves. Okay, so notice I do get the same y value that I got when I eliminated the x variable. And if I wanna get the same x value negative one half, all I have to do is plug this into one of the original equations. Since they already wrote one of the equations there, I'm just gonna go with that one. And so then um, negative four times three halves is actually negative six. And then I would have to add six. So I get two X equals negative one. And then I would have to divide by two and I got negative one half the same. So you get the same X value and the same Y value, regardless of which variable you chose to eliminate at the beginning, okay? But you do have to choose someone to eliminate and then you have to multiply by what you need to make those coefficients the same, but opposite signs, okay? Um, and then you could always go in and check, right? Plug your X and your Y into the first equation, see if it comes out true. Plug your X and your Y into the second equation and then see if that one comes out true. So um, in example one, the system, the two systems of linear equations, the original system and the system obtained by multiplying constants, right? So remember they took this one and they multiplied the whole thing by four. 
um, they are called equivalent systems because they have the exact same solution, okay? So whatever the solutions are, whether there's one point that they that they have, you know, whether it's multiple points that they have as solutions or no points that where they have as solutions, whatever the solutions are to the first system are the exact same solutions for the second system, okay? This is just a multiplier of the other. This one is a multiplier of the original equation. So here are some operations that can be performed with linear equations. You can interchange any two equations. It doesn't matter whether you write equation one on top and equation two on bottom, or if you wanna write equation two on top and equation one on bottom. It makes no difference. It's still a system. You're still gonna eventually eliminate and add them together later anyway, okay? So you can interchange the order in which the equations go, okay? Mm -hmm. You can multiply any equation by a non-zero constant, okay? If you multiply by zero, everything's gonna turn to zero and it serves no purpose, right? Um, but if you multiply by two or negative two or five and negative five, one half, if you really wanted to, you could, okay? And it won't do anything. It'll just create an equal system, okay? Um, you can also add a multiple of one equation to another equation in the system, okay? That's exactly what we did, didn't we? Didn't we add these two things together? And we were adding one equation to the multiple of another equation, okay? And that's what we were adding when we added these two together. So we definitely have seen this. Um, now, graph, graphical um, interpretations. So we definitely wanna take a look at the graphical interpretations, okay? So it is possible for a general system of equations to have exactly one solution. That's a possibility. It could have two or more solutions, or it could have no solution, okay? If a system is a linear system, so not just any kind of system, this is a general, meaning it could be linear, nonlinear, who knows? But if you're specifically talking about a linear system, I underlined the wrong word, um, then you're gonna have two different kinds of solutions, okay? Um, and it must have an infinite number of solutions. So let me talk, let me explain what that means, okay? So for a system of two linear equations and two variables, the number of solutions is one of the following. You're either gonna have just one solution you're gonna have infinitely number many kinds of solutions, but those solutions are dependent on pawn something. And we'll talk about those more later, okay? Or there's no solution, okay? And since we're talking about linear equations, we and if we were to do them the graphical way, okay? Case one would be the case where you have one line going in one direction, one line going the other direction, and they do intersect. And so there's your one solution point, okay? That's case one, the top one, exactly one solution. Case two is that the two lines coincide, which means they are identical. Most of the time that means one is a constant multiplier of the other. So you have one line, but it's actually both. It's just one on top of the other one. Okay, so they're like both on top of each other. In that case, where do they intersect? They intersect everywhere. They intersect here, they intersect here, they intersect here, they intersect here, and so on and so forth. All those solid lines creating that, all those solid dots creating that solid line, okay? It also goes forever, right? So you have an infinite number of solutions going in that direction, an infinite number of solutions going in this direction. But this point over there, is not a solution because it doesn't land on the lines. So not everything is a solution, but it does have an infinite number of solutions which depend on this line, okay? So only the points on that line are solutions, not just any point at all that exists, okay? It has to be points that are specifically on those coinciding lines. And then case three, when you have no solution would be if the two lines were parallel to each other. Because if they're parallel, they're like train tracks. They're never gonna cross each other, okay? They're always gonna be left wheels on the left track, right wheels on the right track, 
okay? The wheels are not ever gonna cross, okay? Um, so in this case, they don't ever intersect. And so that's why there's no solution there, okay? Now there are some words here that they're gonna start atta attaching to this, to these linear solutions, okay? One of them is the word consistent, okay? So it means that the system has at least one solution. Remember, this has one solution. This one has infinitely many solutions. And this one has no solution, okay? So consistent would be both of these two cases. There is a solution, at least one, but it could be more than one, okay? This one does not have a solution at all. So this one is called inconsistent. Okay, now here's another word that they're probably gonna talk about. Oh, yep, there it is, okay? When it's called independent or dependent, okay? Independent means that the two equations are completely different from each other. And so if you notice, this equation is different from this equation. So this would be an independent system. Notice over here, you have this equation and that equation completely different from one another. They have the same slope, but they are not the same line, okay? So this one is also independent. But then you have this one over here that lands literally on top of the other one, which means those two equations, although they might have looked different, they are equivalent, okay? And when your two equations are the exact same graph, that is when it's called dependent. Because yes, I do have an infinitely many number of solutions, but they all depend on the equation of this line, okay? And so there are those words that, um, that you will see. They'll ask you to label them this, this, or that, okay? Let me just be consistent and put arrows on everything. Okay. So we have here, it says, match each system of linear equations with its graph. Describe the number of solutions and state whether the system is consistent or inconsistent, okay? So let's look at these. Um, Oh God, okay. We wanna find the one that has the same line and we wanna find the one that has the same slope and the ones that have different slope. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mess around with A and I'm gonna solve each one of these for Y. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, um, actually I'm gonna do it over here. This is gonna be negative three Y equals three minus two X. Divide everybody by negative three. I'm going to get y equals positive 2 thirds x minus 1. Same thing for here. So I'm going to have positive 6y. That's going to move over. So it's going to be 4x plus 6. I'm going to divide everybody by 6. And I'm going to get y equals positive 2 thirds again, x. And this would be a positive 1. So notice here that they have the same slope but different y-intercepts. So notice that one, the top one has a negative one y-intercept and the bottom one has a positive one y-intercept, but they both have the same slope, going up two units and over one, two, three units to get to the next point. Go up two units and then go over one, two, three to get to the next point, okay? And so this system would be A. And they have no solution, so this is an inconsistent, oops, E-N-T, system. Okay, let's look at system B now. So if I move this 2x, it's going to be negative 3y equal 3 minus 2x. And if I divide by negative 3, well, actually it's the same equation, isn't it? All of these have the same top equation. So I don't have to keep manipulating the top equation. It really helps to notice patterns, right? So these are all the same. So they're all gonna have that same top equation. And even for C, the top equation is gonna be the same. 
But for the bottom equation, if I minus the x over, if I minus the x over, it's going to be 2y equals 5 minus x. And then if I divide everybody by 2, it's going to be y equals, and this would be negative 1 half x, and this would be positive 5 halves. So that means um, for this top one, you're going to have a y-intercept of negative 1 and a slope of 2 over 3. So I end up there, and I could draw my line. For the bottom one, I'm going to have an intercept of um, 5 halves, which is 2 and a half. So notice that you have a two and a half here. And if I go downward one whole unit that puts me here, and then I got to move over two. So one, two, that's going to put me right here at this point. And if I were to draw the line through these two points, it would actually intersect the other line right there. And what are the coordinates there? The coordinates right there are three comma one, okay? And so then this one has a solution, so it's consistent. And this one is actually B. Now, just by process of elimination, this one is C, right? But if you really want to get that formula, so let's move that over. It would be 6y equal to 4x minus 6, divide by 6. And you'd get 2 thirds x minus 1. And isn't that exactly the same thing as the other equation, right? So they are the same exact line. So you basically have one and then another one right on top. Now it does intersect, it just intersects on the whole entire line, okay? So this one is consistent. It does have solutions. The only one that's ever inconsistent is the one that does not have any solutions, which are the parallel ones, okay? And that happens when the slopes are the same but the y-intercepts are not the same. Okay. What happened to the rest of my packet? Oh, here it is. Okay. So it says, at this point, you may be asking the question, how can I tell which application problems can be solved using a system of linear equation? And the answer comes from the following consideration. Does the problem involve more than one unknown quantity? And are there two or more equations or conditions that need to be satisfied? Okay. If you answer, if the answer to one or both of these equations is yes, then the appropriate model for that type of problem would be a system of linear equations. Okay. Or just a system of equations. It may or may not be linear. We don't know. Okay. Um, and believe it or not, uh, we've had a lot of systems of equations. We have had a lot of problems, especially in that chapter five, um, where they gave you like two pieces of information. And if you put these pieces of information into the formula and you put those pieces of information to the formula, you had two equations and two unknowns. And we had to like solve for one of the letters over here and then plug that into this one so that I could solve for one of the letters completely, like get the value of it. And then I would plug that back into the other thing. That was the substitution method. We just didn't call it the substitution method back then. Okay. But it very much was. So here's an example. It says an application of a linear system. It says an airplane, an airplane flying into a headwind travels 200 miles flying distance between Chicopee, Massachusetts, and Salt Lake City, Salt Lake City Utah in four hours and 24 minutes. The, on the return flight, the airplane travels the distance in four hours. So it's the same distance. Find the airspeed of the plane and the speed of the wind, assuming that both remain constant. So we're not putting in too many factors here, like, oh, the wind doesn't stay at the same uh, speed consistently. It has like rhythms or flows where it's like, really gusty and then all of a sudden not and then really gusty again but we're not factoring any of that in here we've got to start off smaller you know and build upon our considerations because the more things you consider the more the larger that the system becomes and then the more difficult it is to solve it okay uh, right now we're just concentrating on solving systems with two variables and two equations 
it is possible to solve a system that has 10 variables with 10 equations. It's a nightmare to try to solve that, but it does happen and you do have to do it, okay? Especially with engineering people, you will definitely have to solve some systems when you get further into your um, engineering uh, curriculum. You will have to eventually solve some systems that have multiple equations. Okay, so it says here, we do have two unknowns. They want us to find the airspeed of the plane and they want us to find the speed of the wind. So that's two unknowns, which means automatically it's gonna be a system. Now, how do we do that? We are going to need to use some bits of information, okay? This is like common sense and no one tells you this until you see it in the example, okay? But we definitely need to acknowledge it, okay? And, and spell it out for you. So that way you have it as a consideration when you're doing these kinds of problems, okay? Doesn't matter whether you're talking about a train, whether you're talking about, well, train problems probably won't have the wind situation, but planes have the against the wind and with the wind and rivers will have with the current and against the current, okay? So you do have those kinds of situations that happen. So when you're talking about against the wind, that means like the wind is blowing east and you're trying to travel west. So, or you're trying, Yes, I said it right. <laughs> the wind is blowing east and you're trying to travel west. And so it's basically pushing against you, right? It would slow you down. And so that's why you would take um, the speed of the wind and that would take away from the speed of the plane, okay? So it would be a slower speed when you're going against the wind. Same with the river. If you're going against the current, it doesn't matter how hard you, you know, paddle your way through there, it's gonna be harder and it's gonna slow you down, okay? So against the wind or against the water current, both of those would subtract the wind of the water current or the wind, the speed of the wind, okay? Um, now, if you're going with the wind or with the water current, then that's gonna help like push you a little in your, the direction that you're going. And so it's gonna speed you up a little bit. So in that case, you would add the speed of the wind or add the speed of the water current, okay? So here's the original flight. The original flight did mention that it was against the wind. So here's him going again, the opposite direction as the wind. And then on the return flight, he was going with the wind. Okay, so the wind's still blowing in this direction and he's going with it. So he's going a little bit faster. Now, we do have to consider um, the formula that distance equals rate times time. He, they did tell us that in the original flight that we went in four hours, and 24 minutes. And then on the return flight, it just took him four hours. So it did obviously slow him down a little bit, right? Because he was traveling the same distance. So the distance was 2000 miles. The rate of um, against the wind and then with wind is the other equation. So against the wind, the distance was 2000 the rate was gonna slow us down. So it's the rate of the plane minus the rate of the speed of the wind. And then you can't put four hours and, and 24 minutes in here. So what they did was they converted the 24 minutes into hours. So 24 minutes is the same as 24 over 60 hours, okay? Um, so, this will now be hours. What the heck is 24 divided by 60? Oh, so it's actually like saying this is 2000 equal to R1 minus R2 and then 4.4, okay? Because 24 minutes is 0.4 of an hour, okay? Um, and then that's what we have. So let's see what they do from there. I believe am I missing? Oh, I just have all these blank pages. I didn't even do anything. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to clean this up a little bit. I do have a binomial times a monomial. So I'm going to distribute this. What I'm going to end up with is 2000 equal to 4.4 R1 minus 4.4 R2. 
the bottom equation, if I take this four and I distribute that, is gonna be 2000 equal to four R1 plus four R2. Now, it didn't say specifically what way we needed to solve this system. So um, we can solve it using the elimination method or the um, substitution method. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do it with the elimination method just since that's what we're covering in this section and we can get a little bit extra practice with it. Now notice that these already have the opposite signs, but since they don't have the same numbers, I'm just gonna multiply the top one by the bottom coefficient four, and I'm gonna multiply the bottom one by the top coefficient 4.4. Not the negative though, because I need this guy to stay negative and this guy to stay positive. So once the numbers match, they will eliminate, right? So that means that the system's gonna become, let's see, what is 2000 times four is not too bad, that's 8,000. 4.4 times four is 17.6 minus 17.6, and then 4.4 times 2,000 is 8,800. And then I would get 17.6 R1 plus 17.6 R2. Now I do the addition or elimination method. These are the same number, but opposite signs, so they cancel. And then I get 16,800 equal to 35.2 R1, and if I wanna solve for R1, I'm just gonna divide by 35.2. And I get 477.27 repeating equal to R1. So um, I think they normally tell us to round, it does not say what to round to, so I'm just gonna round to one decimal place. So this rate one is about 477.3, okay? And remember, it was hours and miles. So this is gonna be miles per hour. Now, what is that? The rate, of, that's the rate of the plane. So this is the speed of the plane. That is what R1 represented, okay? R2 represented the speed of the wind. So we still haven't found that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this R1 value and plug it into either one of these equations, okay? I'm gonna use the bottom one because it doesn't have the 4.4s. So I'm gonna go to the bottom and I'm gonna say 2000 equals four times this R1 um, plus four times R2. I don't know what R2 is, so I'm gonna keep it as R2. Now, I'm gonna use the value that I have in my calculator. I'm not gonna use this rounded version. So I'm gonna use the exact version and I'm gonna hit times four. And you get zero nine repeating. Um, then I'm gonna to have to subtract this number over. I'm gonna do 2,000 minus, oops, no, 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 2,000 minus my answer up there. And I get 90.90 repeating. So I'm gonna have to divide by four. And let's see, divided by four. That's gonna be, it's not enough to make it go up, so it's gonna be 22.7. So remember, this is 22.7 miles per hour, and it's the speed of the wind. And if you do get confused between your variables, you can use your common sense, right? If you have between the options 477 miles per hour versus 22 miles per hour, the plane is going to be the 400 something and the wind is going to be the 22, right? Um, so just keep that in mind. If, if you did not label what each letter represented at the beginning, you can kind of use some, some sense there to, to decipher between the two, okay? But that is it for this example. So next we have a few solutions. Now I do want you to see, I'm hoping that all of my equations that, that were picked that are in here, 
that you're going to get an example of each situation. Remember, you had three cases, one where they intersect at exactly one point, so you get one solution, one where they don't intersect at all, so you get no solution, and then one where they intersect, they're the same line, so they intersect everywhere, okay? What does that solution look like, okay? So, um, and that's gonna explain this. It says if the system is dependent, meaning it's the same line, enter A for X and enter Y in terms of A. So hopefully we get one of those problems so I can kind of show you what that means. Okay, so for here, if you notice, they already both have a one, one is positive and one is negative. So I don't even need to multiply by anything. I can just combine them together right now. 3x plus 1x is 4x. 1y plus a negative 1y cancels. 6 plus a negative 2 is 4. So I get x equal to 1. And I can plug that into either equation. I'm just going to plug it into the top. No reason. I'm just done. You would get the same answer even if you plugged it in the bottom. So I get 3 plus y equal to 6 or y equals to three. And so my solution is just one answer, one for x and three for y. Okay, so that's one kind of answer we could possibly get. Now let's look at number two. So number two, they don't have the same numbers in front. So let's go see. I can turn this into a 12 by multiplying by a two, but I also need it to be one negative and one positive. So since this one's positive and I'm not multiplying by anything, I wanna make this one negative. And so I'll multiply by a negative two because negative two times that positive six will turn it into negative 12. And I'm just gonna place the result right underneath so I don't have to rewrite. This is just me being lazy, okay? So negative two times that is gonna be negative 14 X, negative two times this is negative 12 Y, and negative two times four is negative eight. So when I add these two equations, equation one or equation two, and then negative two times equation one. When I add these together, these are gonna cancel, these are gonna cancel, and I'm gonna get zero on the left-hand side. But on the right-hand side, I get 45. Now is zero equal to 45? This is false. Zero does not equal 45, okay? Now, because that happened and that's a false statement, that's gonna tell me that there's no solution. I can't solve for X and I can't solve for Y. So there's just straight no solution, okay? And so there's the second case that we could possibly happen. I'm hoping we get the third one in just a second. Yeah, I think we should. So here we go, here's the third one. Now here, notice that they both do have opposite signs, so I could pick whichever one I want. I know that five times negative five is negative 25, so I probably just wanna do that and get rid of the X's. So I'm gonna just multiply by five positive five, okay? So what happens is the top is gonna stay the same and the bottom is going to become negative 25 X, positive five Y and positive 20. And when I go to add them together, these are both gonna cancel giving me zero and these are gonna cancel giving me zero, okay? But this is true, zero does equal zero. So when it's true, that means you have an infinitely no many number of solutions, infinitely many solutions. Okay, so that is a dependent system. Now, because it's a dependent system, look what it says here. It says enter A for X. So in my point, I would have A for X, but then I need something for Y, which is also in terms of X. So what do I do? I take one of those equations, which one? I think I'm gonna take the one that just has Y all by itself. 
and I'm going to plug in an A for X. And then I'm going to solve for Y. So this would be negative 5A plus Y equal to 4. And if I add 5A on both sides, I will get positive Y equal to positive 5A and positive 4. And so what expression do I put in here? 5A plus 4. Now, would it have mattered if I would have plugged the A into the top equation? No. I would have had 25A minus 5Y equal to negative 20. I would have had to have subtracted the A over the 25A. So I would have had negative 5Y equal to negative 25A minus 20. And then I would have had to have divided everybody by negative 5. And so I would have gotten Y positive. That would have been positive 5A. And this would have been positive 4. And don't I get the exact same expression for Y as we had before? So it really does not matter which equation you plug it into, okay? Just let A equal X, go put it in one of the equations and figure out what Y would look like with A's in it, okay? But good, I'm glad we addressed all three of the different types of solutions you could have. Okay, so now of course, our last two problems are gonna be these application problems. So for number four, it says two planes start at the Los Angeles airport and fly in opposite directions. So here's LA and one is going in this direction and one is going in that direction, okay? Um, the second plane starts an hour after the first plane. So I don't know what this guy, we'll call this side the first plane and we'll call this guy side the second plane. We have to figure out which one's which, okay? And I'm not about to try to draw a plane because I cannot draw, but whatever, it's, it's like a weird bird. Those are my planes. <laughs> so it does say that the second one flies one hour after the first one. So then however long that this one has been flying, if it left an hour later, this one would have been in the air for one hour more, okay? So whatever his time is, his time is going to be one hour more because he's been driving for or flying for one hour more, longer. It says, um, but its speed, talking about the second plane, the second plane's speed is 60 kilometers per hour faster. So whatever his rate is, um, whatever his rate is, if he's going faster, then this guy's rate is going to be um, that same rate but minus 60 because he's going slower, okay? You could have also said he has a certain rate and if he's going 60 miles per hour, then his would be R plus 60, okay? So whichever way you wanna do it, you wanna call him R and this one R plus 60, or if you wanna call that one R and then this one R minus 60, okay? But the fact is, is that this one should have a faster rate and this one should have a slower rate by 60 kilometers per hour. It says find the speed of each plane. So remember, R is equal to your speed. So find the speed of each plane when two hours after the first plane departs, the planes are um, this value, okay? So it does tell you that the T value is going to be two. It's two hours. When the planes have been flying for two hours after the first one departs, so I know that the time is two, okay? And the planes are gonna be this many miles apart. So however many miles this one is, this is like distance um, one, this one is distance two, and that miles, kilometers. So if I want the total distance, this three zero three zero is gonna be distance one plus distance two, okay? Now, Remember your distance, rate, and time formula. Your distance equals your R1 times your time one. This one is gonna be R1 times time, or R2 times time two. Okay. So let's see what we have here. We have for the first plane, we have um, 
that the rate, whatever it is, it's gonna be R minus 60. And this one's gonna just be R. The time is gonna be T plus one. And the time here is going to be T. We also know that T equals two, don't we? So really what we have here is R minus 60 and then two plus one and R times T or R times two. So it's not too bad. This is actually just three. And R times two is just two R. And so I'm gonna distribute this three. So I get three R minus 180 plus two R. So I'm gonna add 180. And then my R's together make five R. And what is three zero? Three zero plus 180. We get three, two, one, zero. I'm gonna divide by five. Divide, oops, divide by five. I get 642. So that's the R. Now remember, the second plane is traveling at the speed R, okay? So the second plane is going 642 kilometers per hour, right? Now the first plane though, is 60 miles per hour slower, right? Because this one's 60 miles per hour faster. So it would be that 642, but minus the 60. So 642 minus 60 is 582 kilometers per hour. But there are your two values. Make sure when you're doing the web assign that you do put um, the correct values with the correct planes, right? The faster plane versus the slower plane. Plane. This would be the faster plane. This is the slower plane. Now here's another example. So it says two cheeseburgers. Oh God. So I'm going to let X equal cheeseburgers. And then I'm going to let Y equal um, a small fry. Small fries. Okay. So it says two cheeseburgers, so two X's and one, so I'm gonna add the cost of one fry, has a total cost or has a total of 1,440 1, calories. Whereas for the second sentence, you have three cheeseburgers and two fries, and that contains 2,280 uh, 2, calories. Find the caloric content of each item. So I don't know how many calories the cheeseburger is, but I know I'm gonna have to double it because I got two of them. I don't know how much the fries are, but I know I'm gonna have to add those calories to the cheeseburger calories if that's what I get for the total. And the same thing here for the three burgers times the calories for the burgers. So this is a cheeseburger cal calories, and then this is the small fry calorie calories. Okay, so I can solve this. I actually am gonna multiply the top equation by a negative two so that I could have a negative two in the front and I'm gonna put the result down bottom. So negative four X, negative two Y, and then negative two eight eight zero. So I end up with negative one X equal to two two eight zero minus two eight eight zero, negative 600. Divide by negative one, I get that X is 600. So there are, the cheeseburger has 600 calories. Okay. Now, if I want to figure out why, I have to plug this X value into either equation. I'm just going to take equation one. So I'm going to plug in the 600 for X, and I'm going to solve for Y. So this is 1200. One Y can just be written as Y. And then I'm gonna minus the 1200 on both sides. So I get that positive Y equal to 240. So the small fries are actually 240 calories. So make sure you put that in your computer because it'll say like calories for a cheeseburger. Make sure you're putting in the 600 
calories for the small fries, make sure you're putting in the 240. If you get them backwards, even though everything on your paper is perfect, it will count it wrong in the web assignment. So please make sure that you check which number goes where, okay? But other than that, that is the end of this section. Um, and eventually we'll start getting into chapter 10, which is matrices. So it's like the Matrix movie, yes. Um, so it's completely different. It's very different. You will eventually solve systems once we like define what a matrix is, how do they work, what do they look like, what, what, what about it, right? Um, and then after all of that, the, that basic information, then we'll start applying the systems, okay? But that is it for this video. You guys have a good one.